Effective nutrient planning makes good business sense, with the industry's top performers relying on nutrient plans to grow high quality fruit. It helps growers improve the efficiency of their nutrient applications, improve production, improve soil health, reduce pest and disease pressures, save time and money, and reduce the loss of nutrients from farms into waterways. Across the industry, there are many different soil types, features and characteristics, which affect the productivity of a paddock. This means that the nutrient input rates and systems that work for other growers may not be the best ones for you. Nutrient management planning is vital for ensuring the effective management of nutrient supply to banana plants. A nutrient management plan should be based on soil and leaf test results to ensure that growers match nutrients to the needs of their soil and crop. Completing a nutrient management plan is considered to be best practice for all banana farms. Completion of a plan is mandated by legislation in Queensland if exceeding regulated maximum limits of nitrogen and phosphorus. Should a grower feel the need to exceed the thresholds, a leaf test must be done to demonstrate the need upon which limited additional amounts may be applied. A free nutrient management plan template is available to growers online or via ABGC's best practice team. This template includes all of the required information to comply with the regulations along with Fresh Care Environmental. It covers the following steps. Complete a property map. Complete soil and leaf testing. Have nitrogen and phosphorus recommendations made by an appropriate person. Keep record of all fertiliser and soil additives applications and record annual yields. Growers can start the planning process by identifying the different soil types across their farm. Management zones can be determined based on soils and paddock features or characteristics such as drainage and slope. During this stage, growers should also identify block boundaries, block names, block areas in hectares and soil and leaf sampling locations. Record the specific location of testing sites so that the same sites can be sampled again in future. This helps to give a more accurate understanding of the effects of changing nutrient inputs over time. To do a soil test, consider factors such as timing and weather. Take a GPS location on your phone. You can use a star picket and some old drums to mark the location of your soil test for future reference. Take 20 cores for each sample and mix them together. Extract about 500 grams of the mixed soil and package up to send to the lab. If testing for nitrate, ensure it is kept cold in a transportable esky. Leaf testing is the most accurate method for measuring nitrate. To take a leaf test, count to the third fully developed leaf. Cut 10 centimetres out of the leaf and remove the midrib. Package up the sample and send to the lab. Results from soil and leaf tests return from the lab to the agronomist within approximately 14 days. These results are used to determine a plan for nutrient inputs specific to the paddocks associated with the sampled management zones. Ideally, an annual plan should be discussed and tweaked with advice from the agronomist. The plan should include the four R's. Right rate, which refers to the recommended application rates of nitrogen and phosphorus. Right source, which can also include potassium rates and other nutrients, elements or additives such as lime, mill mud and mill ash. Right method, which refers to the application methods for fertiliser, that is, rates relating to fertigation versus using a spreader and how those rates may vary during dry and wet times of the year. Right time, ensuring the time and frequency of fertiliser application is appropriate. Growers must also keep records of the recommendations made by an appropriate person such as an agronomist or reseller. It is an industry, fresh care and legislative requirement for records to be kept regarding fertiliser applications, in particular nitrogen and phosphorus, including manure and mill mud slash mill ash. Additional information to be recorded includes the specific location of each application, for example the farm number with block or management zone name, the details of the agricultural chemical or fertiliser product applied to each location, including 
product name, product percentage of nitrogen and phosphorus. A calculation or record of the cumulative amount of nitrogen and phosphorus to ensure the threshold is not exceeded. It is important that the equipment used is maintained calibrated. To assist growers with record keeping, the Better Bunch app is a free record keeping platform developed by ABGC and can be accessed on computer or downloaded on a mobile device. Under the reef regulations, if completing a nutrient management plan, records must be made within three business days and be kept for at least six years. You can find information on the details required for your farm input records via this website. In addition to recording inputs, growers must make a record of their annual banana production. This demonstrates that productivity is maintained or improved under the nutrient management regime. The yield measurement used can be determined by the grower, but the same measure should be used each year. Yield measurements for recording include the number of cartons per year per farm, the amount of bananas produced per year per farm, the amount of bananas sent to market, or any other annual quantifiable measurement of production. Once a plan is implemented, it can be reviewed at any time and adjusted to meet your plant and soil nutrient management needs as necessary. Join the industry's top performers and make sure your inputs match the needs of your soils and crop. Engage an independent agronomist or contact the Australian Banana Growers Council Best Practice Team.